Well, tonight, if you have your Bibles, turn to Psalms 119. We're in the last part of this series, The Lamp. We've been working on this for the past couple weeks, and tonight is our last part. We looked at two different parts of about God's Word guiding us, and tonight we're going to look at God's Word as delights us. And um, so in this, this part, let's pray. Father, love you. And I just ask you, Father, that you will just uh, help us to take the distractions. Just leave them outside, Father. Help us to focus upon your word. Father, may, may it shape us to be more like you. Father, may no one see or hear me, Father, but they see and hear you. Father, I thank you for the ones in whom are here. I just pray, Father, Lord, that you would do a work in their lives. Father, I pray for the ones that aren't here, Lord. The Father, that you would just speak to their hearts and whatever is going on, Lord. Just pray, Father, for your glory and your honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Psalms 119, we're going to look at verses 111 and verses 112. Verse 111 says, Your testimonies are a heritage forever, for there are the joy of my heart. I incline my heart to perform your status forever to the end. One thing that you notice there in that second word, it has the word testimonies. Many times we get caught up that we have a testimony. But you notice here that it's talking about there's multiple stories that's being told about you and me in which we can talk about in which God's doing in our lives. One story that when I surrendered to ministry, my grandfather talked to me about. He told me a story about a preacher that came in. He sat on the front pew and he was going to preach a revival. And as he came in to preach this revival, the, the pastor of the church introduced him. And, you know, he had this big, long pedigree, been to this seminary, this doctorate, this and that, and, and done all these great things. And as the guy, the pastor was talking about him, the man's chest was getting bigger and bigger. And as he walked up to the pulpit to preach, he lo- opened up his Bible, and you could just see the pride and the arrogance coming off of him. As he looked down at his Bible and he started to read it, he started weeping. And he realized he had made a mistake. Closed his Bible and walked out the church. The man at the back of the church looked at him and said, Sir, if you'd have walked in the pulpit the way you walked out, God would have used you. And here's one of the things that you and I have to catch. We have a testimony about our salvation experience. But there's testimonies that we share each and every day of what God may done for us. Amen. I can tell you stories of just that happened today, even on my way to church, that I have talked to you about people that, that God's put in my path. This guy stopped me, and he said, Wes, he said, we had this family member. He's been in a coma for over three weeks, very little brain waves. They were ready to pull the plug on him. The guy this afternoon woke up like nothing had happened. Knew, everything, er, knew everybody. They're uh, getting ready to release him. I mean, and this guy claims not to be a Christian. He said, but praise God that he's living and his daughter has a father. Now, that's a testimony. But what we have to notice here in this part is you and I every day not just get hung up on the salvation part, but it's part of our heritage. It's part of our history. And it's not just for right now. It's forever. There are stories that's time after time. You can look at great evangelists. You can look at Billy Graham. You can look at Adrian Rogers. You can look at all these great preachers. And you can hear story after story of testimonies of what God did in their lives. Now the question is, can God start those testimonies about you, about me? Can those testimonies be passed down through heritage? Can they affect generations to come? As you notice here in the last part, it says, for they are the joy of what? My heart. This is the Lord in which is telling saying, those testimonies, those things in which you're doing for me, those things and how you're being used to honor and glorify me, they're bringing joy to my heart. Can you imagine actually verbally hearing in your ears the words from Jesus saying, you brought joy. To my heart. Wow. 
not just hearing, well done, my good and faithful servant, but him telling you, you brought joy to his heart. You say, well, I would love to hear that. I want to accomplish that. Well, you and I have a responsibility. That responsibility is that our testimonies are pointing people toward Christ instead of away from Christ. Notice in verse 112, it says, Incline my heart to perform your status forever. He's saying, look, heavens are coming. It's coming. And he's saying, look, this is forever. This isn't just temporary. But our heart has to be focused. It has to be, be inclined. It has to be tilted toward heaven to perform these things. You notice, like I shared with you, the story about the preacher? His heart wasn't pointed toward heaven when he walked into the pul pulpit. His heart was turned and pointed toward himself and his accomplishments. You and I, many times, allow our heart to start turning and pointing toward us and our accomplishments. When our heart needs to be tilted toward Christ, toward heaven, to bring Him glory and honor. So as we look at this and we, we're noticing these things, how's the heritage that you're leaving behind for the generations to come? Or is the heritage and the things in which you're leading that people will say about you, your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, even friends, co-workers, they're going to say, that person was a man or woman after God's own heart. Can they say that your heart was tilted toward heaven? Your heart tilted toward that of Christ. You notice when you see these two verses, there's no compromising. You realize that one of the quickest things to lose is a testimony. The easiest thing to lose is a testimony. Quickest and easiest thing to lose is our character. When we choose to make mistakes and things we shouldn't do. And at that moment, people see it. Just last week, I was talking to this guy. And he, told me, he was talking to me about that at this place he works. He says, I work with a preacher. He said, but that preacher, he, he, he's cussing all the time. He said, it's no different than me. All I can do is look down and say, man, I, I don't know. You realize that that preacher... His character, his testimony is shot. Do you realize that his character, his testimony, his heritage that he's leaving behind in the imprint of those people he's working with aren't going to be pointing them to Christ? It's going to look like another hypocrite. So you and I have a responsibility that the heritage in which we leave behind, it points people to Christ, toward the Heavenly Father, not to us. Not to a building, but to Christ. Let's pray. Father.